so clearly there's a lot of construction going on outside of our old set while we're building our new one. So we're kind of in the shitty position right now where it's noisy no matter what we do. So I apologize for that. But until our set is done and they're done, we get to deal with the noise and being semi-homeless, but that's okay. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk today about uh, the new vulnerabilities that are going on with Intel processors, but we're not gonna talk so much about the problem. We're gonna talk about the potential effects of the problem on your day-to-day, -day, and then we're gonna kind of test whether or not disabling hyper-threading only affects our performance like 7%, which is what Intel is trying to make you believe. The new Bridge PCIe cables from Cable Mod fuse two separate PCIe cables together with a single closed comb for an incredibly clean look. You can configure yours however you like using their easy to use configurator and from now until May 27th you can take 15% off your order using the coupon code MAY15. This coupon code is good for absolutely everything on the Cable Mod Global Store, so if you've been looking to pimp your rig with Cable Mod gear, now's the time. To learn more, click the link in the description below. Okay, so like I said, we're not gonna talk a whole lot about the problem itself. If you guys wanna learn more about this new vulnerability, it's called zombie load, and it's specifically affecting like predictive computing. And so that is gonna specifically be dealing with Intel CPUs and hyper-threading. And you can drill down into that more, it's, it's called MDS, but you can drill down into that more if you go and do some searches. But what I can tell you, the problem regarding this and zombie load is the fact that it could be affecting clouds. How much information have you sent to the cloud? How much data have you ever s just connecting to the internet? Your information is in the cloud. Packets are sent, packets are received. And so we have server farms and data farms and all that that could be potentially affected by this. So that's a whole different level enterprise solution that's gonna have to be figured out in terms of patching and MCU or microcode updates. So I looked at it this way, I'm like, what is the impact gonna be for you my average viewer who's gonna be general use computing, maybe some video rendering or live streaming and gaming. So today we're gonna to do some testing on both hyper-threading enabled and disabled on our 8700K, not our highest end CPUs that we have because we want to kind of try and keep it sort of realistic to the real world. We have a 2080 on here, not a 2080 Ti. So this is more like a 1080, a 1080 Ti and, and I guess technically not really lower than that, but whatever. What we wanna see here is what the impact would be like if you wanted to take the extreme measure of protecting yourself by disabling hyper-threading. Now, like I stated earlier, it's a really convoluted, complex problem that uh, I don't know what the solution is gonna be long-term on that. I don't think Intel does either, but they made a statement that it's okay, you can disable hyper-threading and you'll lose like 7% performance. Well, it's kind of funny because Apple said the same thing, only they quoted 40% of a performance loss. So I'm kind of curious as to what that number really is. So we're gonna test that today and see what the real impact is gonna to be to my average viewer. All right, so as you can see with our 8700K, it's still running at five gigahertz. That's only like a 300 megahertz overclock uh, on all cores. So this isn't out of the box performance, but like I said, what we're testing here is what the bottom line, what did we lose performance wise on my rig by disabling hyper-threading? So obviously your results may vary depending on your motherboard. If you have a hyper-threading CPU, you more than likely even on, a, on like a, a B series motherboard would have the ability to disable hyper-threading. So you could test this on your own and it's only one switch you have to flip inside the BIOS. Of course, each BIOS is gonna be different. So let's do this. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let me do a 3D Mark run first. And the reason why I like 3D Mark is the fact that it gives us both a physics test, which is CPU, and it gives us a GPU test, which is obviously high frame rates, which CPU can hold that back. We see it all the time, especially when we're doing like our, our high A, you know, LN2 cooling benchmark runs that uh, the CPU does indeed affect the graphics score. So that is what we are gonna test for sort of our baseline there. Um, probably a Cinebench, we'll do a Cinebench run as well. And we are going to do times by extreme, we'll do both, screw it. We'll do times by extreme and we'll do regular time spy. We'll just kind of do some tests and then we'll just disable hyper-threading and do the same test. So here's our baseline, the very first test that we did, everything is on hyper-threading, five gigahertz and all that. No overclock being applied to our graphics card. That's important. Um, there's no afterburner running, any of that. So we've got a graphics score of 5223, a CPU score of 3645 for a combined score of 4904. Now we obviously know when we turn on hyper-threading, it's gonna go down. But anyway, there's our base mark, uh, our baseline, 4904 with our two individual scores. So let's see 
uh, what Cinemark gives us, or Cinemesh, Cinemark, Cinemesh, whatever. Could you imagine if they just combined the two tests? <laughs> three, three, 3D bench. 3D bench, Cinemark. <laughs> Okay, so for our baseline test right now, I'm not gonna go through the scores really, I'm just gonna show you which ones we did, because what we're gonna do here is we're gonna put them in a graph format. We care more about how much performance we lost rather than what the actual score is that we started with, because the one we end up with is kind of the point here. So we did uh, Cinebench R15 with hyper-threading on all 12 cores, six cores, 12 threads doing their thing at five gigahertz. We did Time Spy Extreme and regular Time Spy because they both respond very differently to workload because it's, this is te technically a 4K test versus a 1080p test or a 1440 test. Um, we did 1080p Metro Red X um, in, um, again, no overclocks to the GPU, so we wanna see what happens to our average frame rate because this is a high frame rate game, 208.9 frames per second. So we wanna see how, what happens to that once we cut the, that workload potentially in, I don't know, by a third. I mean, hyper-threading, people think it's like doubles your performance, it doesn't. Um, same thing in 1440. And we also did Shadow of the Tomb Raider in both 1080p and 1440, mostly because this is a very CPU-centric uh, game as well. So we also did a uh, premiere of our Kingpin video. So we did a premiere render with a 9900K. We're doing this on Phil's test bench, and then we're gonna re-render it, or edit rig, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's a test bench today. And then Phil is gonna also re-render it with the exact same settings and same export settings with hyper-threading disabled. So those are our tests. So let's go ahead and disable hyper-threading. Now in your particular motherboard, it's going to vary. We have an ASUS motherboard here. This is a Strix uh, Z370 or Z270. Hey, they started working again. Apparently that union uh, break is over. So anyway, I digress. Um, let's go ahead and uh, go into the BIOS here. Now I'm just mashing delete some of my BF8, whatever. Look at your motherboard manual. I can't tell you how to get into BIOS on your motherboards, but I can tell you on ASUS, you can mash delete. And then what you're gonna get is a menu that looks like this. If it's an ROG board, it's, it's red. It might be blue, uh, depending on which motherboard you have. Um, so you just go over here to advanced CPU configuration, hyper-threading, disabled, F10, save. So now we just turned off hyper-threading entirely. So now we have a six core, six thread CPU. Do you think we're gonna lose more than seven to 9%? All right, so we ran all the tests and stuff. So the question is now, how does it all stack up? Well, if you take a look at these charts that we're kind of showing you right now, you'll see that hyper-threading for gaming really doesn't make that much of a difference. Believe it or not, it's a subject I haven't really di di divin, di divin, dive, 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 dove, dove, dove. dove. I have not done a lot of testing with how hyper-threading directly relates to gaming performance. But we do know as CPUs and stuff become more you know, utilized in games and multi-threaded, it could indeed, have an impact. Now what you're gonna notice with these percentages is that this is just the one task. It's the one game running and the comparison of hyper-threading on, hyper-threading off, you know, half the logical cores. But we saw as low as 0% loss, so like 1440 in Metro, all the way up to about, what, 15.6 or 16.8% loss in Premier. Fun fact about Premiere though, is if you're running a CPU that's got an iGPU in it, we showed in the past on how you can enable hardware acceleration where the iGPU built into the, to the CPU can handle all the H.264 encoding on a hardware level, so it doesn't really matter at that point because once you enable that, we got the exact same score or time, pretty much about 11 minutes with hyper-threading on and off, but that's because it's offloading it to a whole separate die anyway. An interesting thing though is with Time Spy, we saw the exact same percentage drop with hyper-threading on and off in both extreme and non-extreme. But what's interesting is that we did say, see a bigger reduction in normal versus extreme because of the lower resolution, higher frame rates, which of course the CPU can start to hold it back. But we saw in Time Spy, we actually saw the graphics score increase ever so slightly, like 60 points or something like that probably still within margin of error, but we did of course see the CPU drop on both of the physics tests because that is 100% CPU. It seems to be roughly around where uh, Intel was saying the performance loss would be, you know, 7% to 9%, nowhere near the 40% that Apple is saying the performance loss could be, but we don't know what those testing perimeters were. We don't have any details about what rig they used, what CPU they used. What we think uh, Apple could be wanting to make Intel look a little bit worse than maybe it really is because who knows what their future holds in terms of proprietary hardware. They could also be trying to cause a little bit of pressure for Intel to do something more quickly. We don't know. So at the end of the day, I'm much more comfortable now telling people like, look, if you're building a system just for gaming, 
it makes sense to save some money and go with like a 9600K or 9700K versus a 9900K. But again, this is a six core CPU where a four core would obviously show us more of a gap. But uh, yeah, so I, this kind of really changed my way of thinking on the way I might build some of my future systems when we start thinking budget and even high end because uh, gaming systems just, for the, for the example of gaming, do not get hit that hard with hyper-threading, even on the multi-threaded uh, stuff like uh, Far Cry and Shadow of the Tomb Raider and all that sort of stuff. Um, but again, it really depends on what you're doing with the computer. If you have tons of programs running, you have background tasks going, if you've got VMs, all that sort of stuff, then obviously you want as much of the horsepower as you can possibly get. All right guys, thanks for watching. I just wanted to kind of put this out there. If you were curious about what performance you'd lose if you turned off your uh, hyper-threading on your Intel CPU, not as much as we initially thought, which really truly surprised me. So, all right guys, if you think this is something we should investigate further in terms of hyper-threading in games and how they correlate, let us know what titles you think we should test. There's so many titles out there, it's impossible for us to really determine what the most universal titles are. So this is where you guys help us uh, try and determine that. All right, we're gonna go now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. And I got a set to build, because I'm done with this crap. So we're gonna do Cinebench now. <laughs> that <was a> terrible <laughs> <laughs> it's time to start, uh, well, kind of show the feed to go burn and then burn and, and it's the Norfordorf. And uh, caught, perfect.